Hello, my name is Shyla Court with Decorizing Your Life. I have a storefront in Watauga, Oklahoma. Sh- Chateau is how I'm pronouncing it, but I do not know if that's correct. We're doing the Chateau Paint Inlay. Super, super gorgeous. Now let me show you the project we're doing. I put a light tan, one coat of clay paint. And then that is a gray green. And I put, went ahead and put two coats on there because I think it's going to be done. I don't know. We'll see. I might put a trindle. I may put a trindle of something around here of this paint inlay. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So on my second coat to put the paint inlays in, I am going to go ahead and use a white. And I hope when I pull the paint inlays off, it kind of gives it, I hope it pulls them off and makes it kind of, you know, another color show. We'll see. So we're doing the top and we're doing some on the top of there. So I've got to put this down and let's get started. So this is a very, very white, bright white that I'm going to put over this light tan. I have not tried the paint inlays with one step paint. I think they work, but you might want to use a search bar and see if somebody can give you some tips on that. Cause I haven't personally used that. I know it works. It's just different. I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to go ahead and use this really big brush. You don't have to, cause you want your I would suggest putting this in a bowl because sometimes that could leave a pattern where you squirreled it. But this is going to be a busy thing, so I'm not worried about that. You know, you want a, a generous amount. So I went ahead and pre-cut mine to where I want it to be used. So you kind of want to have that figured out before you lay it down. Okay, I can see through, so I want it more generous. I am fine with doing all different directions and building texture because if I do a wax or something over this, I can, it or a glaze, it will catch in those highs and lows and give some more dimension and I love that. Okay, so I think, okay, this is off-label practice, okay? But my clay paint dries so fast, this is off-label. Be careful if you do this. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of wetness. You could do that, but don't get it too juicy or you will mess up your stuff, okay? So these two pieces go together to make this beautiful base. Okay, so see this edge right here? I should have pre-cut that because you want to splice this together. I'm just going to do it with scissors. I have taken one of these and put it on paper and done it with a ruler and let that, you know, and I don't know. If you want to be really persnickety, that is totally fine. I've done that, but I'm also just going to do this right here without my glasses. That's that's the scary part. I don't have my glasses on. I have some right here, but I usually keep them on top of my head. Oops. So let's do this. I'm just going to get up here and kind of eyeball it. You can, you know, actually measure and get your center, put a little painter's tape from some guides. You know, if you're, if you, if that will bug you and drive you nuts, do it. Just do it. I'm going to make sure that's wet enough. I think it is. You just really want to make sure it's juicy enough because it won't activate the paint inlay that's on your image and stick in there. So I just went ahead and went over it again because like I said, this dries so fast. There's some grid lines on here and I love those sisters if they did that for us because then you could kind of line it up, make sure it's not, you know, going like that or that if, you know, it's a base that you want straight. Okay, so I committed, I committed. Ah. Okay, so here we go again. You want them pretty matched up. You know, you don't really want it to overlap each other, but you don't want it real far apart. But let me tell you, if you got it, if you left a gap in between this, no worries, because guess what? You can, after it's done, you can wet your artist brush and blend that in. You can pull some of those colors off and you will not see the gap. So don't forget that tip. Anytime you think, oh, I've rendered it, it's a mess, I'm so mad. No, let it just make you more creative and figure out how to overlay something or how to distress a spot to blend a mess. You know what I'm saying? And already I could tell you, I think I went over that way too far, but that's okay. So I got that down and you kind of want to do this with your fingers. You know, just kind of make sure it's all touching. And then we're going to give it a little spray and we're going to have a wet sponge. Oh my goodness. The colors are just coming to life here. They're dulled when they're dry, but they're popping in. Okay. 
So I just took a sponge, any kind of sponge, you can do a wet cloth as well. And I'm gonna kind of go over and I'm going to pet it and tell it it's pretty. You're so pretty. It's gonna be so pretty. Oh no, I actually did it right. Yeah, it's, it's even on both sides. That was an accident. <laughs> I did it perfect on accident. Okay, so I had pre-cut this because I was going a different direction, so I need to find him. So I like sponges rather than water because then it just doesn't drip and then you can kind of push harder and get it to, because what you're doing is you want that transfer paper all the way wet. And then when it dries, which I'm gonna have to dry some with a hair dryer. Let's find that piece I spliced in there. Oh, there he is, because I was going a different direction. So we gotta re-wet that a little, ret, re-wet that. It's probably wet enough, but I wanna make sure it's wet enough with paint. Okay, now, I did this. I was scared to try it with you guys on live here, but I did it and it worked so good because I want my tan that is underneath my second coat of white to show through. Well, one way you could do it is kind of scrunch your paper up and like kind of push it in and let it be wrinkled. And for some reason that picks that up really good. So that's a way to do it. I just didn't want to try that out again with you right now. <sighs> Okay, so I'm lining it up with the grid lines and it's splicing together beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray it. I just really want to make sure I don't want to lose. Oh, the other thing about these, these are a little bit more expensive. But you can use them like two to three times. And then when it gets really bad, I'm, I mean on certain projects, maybe a lower end project, you can even use it for decoupage paper. I've actually done that. And I heard somebody else on here do it too. And I was like, oh good. I wasn't the only one that tried that. I mean, the grid lines show a little bit, but literally it's, it still can be used for certain, for certain things. So, okay. Then we're just going to let it set dry. We're going to move on and hopefully this will get dry enough. I can pull it off and show you, but look, isn't that going to be so pretty? Okay. So now here we want to fill in some of these. I'm going to fill in the flowers up here. I hope I can find them. Because there's, there's eight sheets of this stuff. There's the top of the flower right there. So let me cut that off. And I found, like, see this right here? And there's still a little bit of image on here. I have found, instead of trying to cut it perfectly, because this does stretch and give a little bit or shift where you thought it was going to be, I like to just let it go. And then when I pull it off, it's fine. And you can cut the, because it's first juice on that part, you know. So I have found just to kind of, when you can, let it hang off the edge and then just, it can be reused later, don't worry. I love this one because look, it's got a lot of little, um, a little like where it looks cracky and layered and chippy other colors in between the main image. And I really like how they did that. Does that go there? If it's not supposed to go there, it's going there today. So I'm peeling that up where the image needs to meet and I forgot to cut it. No problem. It's actually fine because it's lining up. I overlapped those and I can tell I did good because the grid line's pretty there. Okay. And so I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that down with my fingers. Oh gosh, guys, this is, I have been itching to use this ever since it came out. Let's do this one more time. And when you're doing your sponge, don't push too hard because you'll push the paint out from underneath it. I have to lift that up because I forgot to cut that one. Line that up. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. Okay, so now I got that. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Give it a little spray. And then I got my wet sponge and I'm just kind of... Don't freak out that this is kind of wrinkled up. It all blends, I promise. Like I said, I kind of create some wrinkles and push them in and pull them so that when I pull it off, it'll pull some of the... Because I've moved the, the base paint under there or the top coat paint and it, it really creates a good thing. Okay, all right, now I gotta find the bottom and I could splice and do something different here um, because that was actually the bottom of the image. See, that's the bottom of the image right there. So uh, I've cut, look at this, look what they've done. Look at that. Look at it on the wall with that green and blue uh, melded kind of background on a wall. You can do it on fabric okay and save your packaging because look at that you can put this in our mini frame molds i do it all the time i cut this in mod podge it. the wallflower i even did on the um top of the tv tray the front packaging so um and it worked really good okay so i gotta figure out what i want down here i think i'll use some of these 
yeah, let's use that. So let's do that there. Like I said, I have a better luck just letting it dangle if it, if it will, if it's not too heavy, than to cut this piece. Then you don't have all these little bitty pieces that you've, which works fine too. And notice when I am doing that off label thing, it is a, a mister bottle. It's not a heavy mist spray bottle. So I think I want it to come out. Yeah, that's what I want it to do. Like it's coming out there. So let me pick that up a little bit where I didn't cut it guys, but you'll see it. It's totally fine. All right. And also on your second and third use, whatever top coat you put this into, that color will transfer onto your next project, which adds dimension and colors and lots of goodness. So that's, I love that about it. So, all right, now I gotta find the coordinating one. Do the same thing here. Kind of angling that up a little bit. Oh guys, this is gonna be so pretty. So pretty. Okay, so now let's re-wet that just a little bit and then let's sponge it. I like that. And I probably need to put a little something, something here. And I might just do that at other time. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this bottom pedestal. All right, again with the tan and the white. Look, it kind of curves around there. So I think we'll work with that. Yeah, I think we'll work with that. I would suggest figuring out your composition first, which means lay the pattern out. And I didn't have enough space to keep it there when I figured it all out yesterday. So I had to, um, yeah. Anyways, but leave it all out and make sure, key, if you lay it out this way, in my brain, go ahead and lay it this way because this is how you're going to have to do it because you'll have to switch everything. So lay your composition out with the face side down or you're gonna have to be reconfiguring everything, okay? And then just kind of space it out, draw it on pieces of paper, put numbers on here, do whatever you have to just kind of keep up with it, especially when you're doing a big project. So let's put some paint on here. Okay, there we go. I weighted that down a little bit, but again, you could just take your sponge kind of convince it to do its thing. All right, let's keep going. I'm telling you, taking these off are the most satisfying thing, but depending on your climate and the piece and all sorts of things, it takes longer to dry. Like it can dry in an hour. It, you can leave it on for weeks and then come back and do it. It's fine. But I'm gonna have to hit this with a blow dryer and hopefully get to pull it off to show you. Okay, this is another tip some people do. So I've got that ready to go, right? And because I said it's really dry, some people, and I've seen the sisters actually do this too, they go ahead and just kind of, it makes it a little more pliable and stuff. You just got to know it's already breaking everything down. And so you don't have time to shift before it'll start grabbing it. So yeah, I mean, you can do it. I like it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't do that. Okay, then we're just going to put this, oh, I want all of that flower on there, so... I mean, I was born 1970, okay? So Bob Ross was out there, right? And I keep hearing now that I'm getting all artisty and doing all these products and stuff, people are like, oh, Bob Ross. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know who he is, but I didn't know nothing about him. Anyway, so I'm totally into Bob Ross right now. So, okay, guys, that's it. So we're just gonna let that set. There's more I wanna add. Like right now, I'll just add this little thing right here. I'm gonna dry this a little bit and see if I can pull some off for you, all right? Okay, let's try it. I hope this works. It may not have been on there long enough, but it's looking like it went back to the... Okay, so then you've let it dry an hour, days, weeks, whatever. I don't know how anybody can wait weeks because this is so satisfying pulling this off. So then you take the spray bottle again. You spray that piece and you wait the 30 seconds longest of your life. You got to wait a little bit. And if you start pulling it up and it starts tearing, Rewet it, let it set for a second, and then keep going because you want to reuse these pieces. So, okay, so here we go. I hope I, I hope I left it on there long enough. I really pressed through the steps here, oh! and it is pulling up some of my paint so that my two colors show. Oh, guys, absolutely gorgeous! Oh my word! Look at the colors. Okay, and. 
see now you want to just let this I use the carrier sheets that it come with and I lay it down and then I let it dry on those to be reused face up paint up okay look how much more paint is on there I'm for sure gonna get two more times with this so you may think oh those are pricier no totally worth it there there are more than one use look at that color look at the colors okay so now this one more tip before I'm gonna wrap this up so I forgot to cut that edge that extra okay see how that's extra and I couldn't splice it up to each other cut that off before you put it down I forgot but I forgot and it was on the paper and all I did was when I went to put the piece up that matched if you forget I literally just lifted it up and stuck my next piece under there it was fine now if you do that and you have a little gap in between the seams this is what you do take your artist brush and dip it in water this is paint and it is still moving until you set it with a top coat a water-based top coat or wax so then I dip it in water and then I just gently you don't want to smudge it too much put it on there let that water break the paint down a little bit and then you just do your little artist thing kind of blend it and you won't have a seam. it works okay if it's a severely bad if something happens it doesn't look bad let it get completely dry sand it off with a sanding block very very fine not heavy just a very fine sanding block and that look looks so good too I just I can't hardly do it because I love the vibrancy but it's good so those are some tips um, do you see that it's like they put speckles of other colors throughout this and then like see how that's lifting up some of my other paint and my my tan showing through I, I like that and probably what I'll do is kind of work with that a little bit maybe add some more or something okay another tip I kind of like the blurry look because if you do work with these flowers a little bit it'll even look more watercolory so you can go have fun with this later you can add touches of other stuff to it there's some black and white transfers you can watercolor inside those so there you go that is all I have for you today okay we'll see you guys next time